described uh, is the vision of the future, but like, like as I mentioned uh, just a few minutes ago, we're still quite far from that future. Not really that, uh, but things are coming up, things are developing pretty fast. I am, um, I would say, relatively cautiously optimistic that we might see some of that in our lifetime, and definitely a lot of young people here in their lifetime. Um, so the, this, this vision of technical health, or we, we also call it a digital health twin, because we basically were speaking about collecting data and uh, simulating the processes that are going on in our physical body or body and mind, simulating that in computer environment. Now this is based, as uh, John mentioned, uh, on a few things on genomics, genome data. Uh, obviously the basis for that is the, our, our biological code within our DNA. And the second part is what Dr. E. Hood calls phenome. And phenome is the collection of data on our organism which is generated normally or nowadays by the representatives of the health systems. Such as, for example, if you go to a brick and mortar hospital and you have a CT scan or an MRI, you go and you give blood tests. Now, this is, this is all our phenom data. And by the way, there are already nowadays uh, attempts to simulate or to create uh, framework systems for this kind of approach to health and well being. Uh, let's say there is a, there is a, a, a gentleman named uh, Peter Dermatis, uh, who is uh, one who is, who is a host, he's a medical doctor, he's an AI uh, also a visionary, he, 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 he has a podcast, a YouTube channel, and an extremely interesting person. Whoever is into AI, especially AI and digital health, I definitely recommend following his podcast and he hosts a series which is named abundance and that is about AI and what AI and AI is going to bring to mankind. And he also hosts a, a series named uh, Longevity, so he's into longevity. And he's also one of the co-founders of a uh, health system which is called Fountain Life. Now what these guys do, they start with, uh, let's say, with a full body and an eye scan of a person and then they take a few thousand uh, physiological parameters through blood and other tests and then they repeat it and they follow that person's health. Now that is the vision that you identify. You take the, uh, let's say, the baseline uh, condition of the, of the person and then you follow that person with uh, a regular, kind of think of, think of it as, as, as regular checkups. And for example, Dr. Nehud describes similar problems in his, in his book with 5,000 plus physiological parameters. And this is what he refers to as phenome, which is a, 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 a constellation of all the physiological parameters, physiological data on the world. On top of that, the third most important, perhaps, component, or no less important component of this uh, digital health twin is the uh, sensor data. Sensor, sensor, sensor. Those sensors nowadays, most of the sensors we have are wearable sensors. We even call them wearables. Now, this is just the beginning, obviously, and sensors are getting better and better. It's exactly the same story, the sensors that we have today, compared to what is coming up on us, is again the same story, similar to what we have now, let's say, Tesla compared to 1930s Buick, because the sensors are getting even ever smaller. Uh, more efficient, ever more data, ever mini more uh, miniature, where already there is already a lot of experimentation uh, in the domain of embedded sensors, and eventually we're, we're talking about nano sensors, circulating sensors, injectable sensors, ingestible sensors, and so on and so forth. So sensors are or IoT, so called Internet of Things, or Internet of Medical Things. That is the third important component that will contribute data to this digital health twin. And of course there are also ambient sensors, there will be data coming from, uh, obviously from health providers, from social media, and from a uh, multitude of other sources. And all of that should be now, as Ida mentioned, the most important challenge nowadays, nowadays is that we, we don't really have high quality health data, ladies and gentlemen. Even though I mentioned it the other day, 
uh, it is estimated that out of the all data available nowadays globally, all data, several bank, correct me if I'm wrong, yotabytes or satellites or uh, hundreds of yotabytes data in the world, uh, it is estimated that already approximately one third, 30 percent, three zero, of all that data is somehow related to medicine. But that data, most of the time, the data that we have today is crap. It's not well structured. It's very uh, often uh, not accurate enough, and most importantly, that data you, you can do very little with that data because of all the products they just don't talk to each other. That's why we're speaking about interoperability. We're speaking